direct or newsstand edition? Which one's more valuable? Which one's rarer? And which one should you get? I'm going to teach you a little bit about it. Stick around. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris, and welcome to We Love Comics. And thanks to a couple of subscribers asking for this, I wanted to teach you a little bit about the history of the newsstand and direct editions. What basically is the difference? Which one is rarer? And what ones you should really want to get? So kind of get an understanding of why these are the way they are. So I'm not going to give specific dates and things like that because that's not really relevant I, and I don't want to make the video too long. So let's just dive into it and we'll get a little brief history first and then I'll tell you which ones are the, the ones you want to try and get if possible. Alright, so this is probably the type of comic you've seen in the Silver Age where all of a sudden you see about one quarter of the cover ripped off and there have been plenty of people asking why that happens well there was a time when you could actually be able to return any comics that you did not sell and instead of sending the whole book back they allowed you to take just a section of the cover basically the title to prove that the book was not sold the ironic part is like this book right here uh, eventually they became valuable in themselves but if you've ever seen a book like this the reason it was cut off is because they use that as proof to return the comic and get a refund now obviously this destroys the book and they wanted to try and uh, try and find a better way to be able to do this so this is the next comic you're gonna find okay so this is the next one you've probably seen before uh, this started happening around the late 70s roughly between 77 and 79 somewhere in that general area again the dates really aren't that relevant but if you notice right here there is a line that goes through the barcode now many people have asked about that and thought maybe some kid was drawing on it but this was done by the companies to be able to distinguish the difference between the direct and newsstand so if you saw two of these same comics, one with this line and one without, the one with the line through it is the direct edition. So that would be the one the comic book stores would purchase. The newsstand version without the line would end up being like 7-Elevens and other local stores like that. So they could actually be returned. So if you see two of the same comic, you always want to try and get the one without the line because it's going to be a rarer comic. So let's get into the part where we see the Copper Age and where it went from there. Which leads us right back to the main picture that you saw in the beginning. Now, this is very popular, and especially this book, you'll pretty much know it. You'll notice on the left side, you see a Spider-Man, and you see the right side is just the barcode. Now, they wanted to have a nicer way to be able to separate it because people didn't really want to line through their comic. So if you look on the left-hand side, that is the direct edition, which means if a comic book store ended up getting these and ordered 100 of them and only 10 of them sold, they were stuck with the other 90. They couldn't return them. The ones on the right with the barcode, those were actually the newsstand editions, which means that... The companies that had them, if they had, let's say, again, ordered 100 and only sold 10, they can return the 90, and those comics would be destroyed. So, basically, what would happen is, because, again, I don't want to make this a very long video, and I'm sure there's plenty of others that can get into the history of it, but most people really just care about what it is, is the fact that the newsstand editions are much rarer than the direct editions, because all the direct editions... You know, unless, of course, you know, they got lost in the mail or damaged along the way, none of them could be returned, so there was a lot more of them. But depending on the store location, a newsstand edition could have anywhere from 50% of the original sale to, you know, whatever amount returned, which the company Marvel would destroy them, so they would no longer be in existence. 
So as you take over the, the years that go by, the decades that go by, comics that get lost, comics that get destroyed, somebody spills water on them or there's water damage accidentally, somebody sends it through eBay and they don't protect it well and it gets destroyed or lost in the mail, these become rarer and rarer over time. So when you buy a comic book, you really want to try and get the newsstand edition. Now, the reason that places like CGC, CBCS, and PGX don't really distinguish the two is because no one really talks about this. So there isn't enough buzz to warrant enough people to be able to know the difference between these two. So hopefully videos like this will be able to get you to understand the difference between direct and newsstand and how to be able to know which ones you have. So obviously the first one that I showed where it was the page was ripped, that's going to dramatically lower the value of the book. But I mean, if you have, for example, Amazing Fantasy 15, that book is still going to be worth a couple of thousand dollars. So it depends on the issue. But modern day, now they just changed the UPC code to a Spider-Man or they do a 30th anniversary label. Or today's modern comics basically will either have a barcode or they will just say direct edition. So that's how you can tell the modern age comics. So that pretty much boils it down. That hopefully should get you to understand the difference between the two and why you should want to collect the newsstand over the, the direct. And who knows, maybe one day enough people will get this information out and maybe one day all the grading companies will specify the difference and start mentioning it more often on the graded comics. And you'll actually hopefully one day see a value price-wise for the newsstand to be higher than the other. As of now, because most people don't know about it, it hasn't affected the market. So videos like this, share them, get them out there, because the more people spread the word, the more information gets out there, the more likely your newsstand edition may see a higher demand and, and higher price. So hopefully that helps. Don't forget to wait until the end to see who's today's subscriber shout out. You just got to be a subscriber. And if you ask for one, I'll put you on the list and um, hit the like button to show support. And leave your comments because I always love interacting with all of you. And don't forget, it's not you, it's not I, it's We Love Comics. Hopefully this video helped you, and I hope you all have a great day. See you next video. Before you find out who's today's surprise subscriber shout-out, come check out my new We Love Comics Proud to Be a Comic Collector t-shirt and mug. Great gift for any comic book lover, and it helps to support my channel. To find them... Just click right here.